Okay, so this particular example asks us to find the force of tension in both ropes. So we have a 25 kilogram mass in the middle here, and we have two ropes that are hold, holding it into place. We have rope number two over here, and we have rope number one. And we know that there's a 55 degree angle between the rope one and the wall. Okay, so the first thing you always, always, always do when you're trying to solve any type of force question the very first thing you want to do is draw a free body diagram. So that's always, instantly, your instant first thought should always be to draw a free body diagram. Okay, so we're going to draw a free body diagram for our 25 kilogram mass. So there's our mass there. The first force that I know I have acting on this mass is I have the force of gravity. So we'll call that FG. The next force I have is the force from rope two holding it in place going that direction here directly horizontally. So I'm gonna call that force tension because it's a rope, all right? And anytime you have a force acting on a rope like that, it's called tension, okay? And, and here we're gonna have actually two forces of tension. We have the force tension from rope two and we have the force tension of rope one so instead of just writing FT, I'm gonna put a little subscript two to indicate that that's the force from rope two. Okay, so that's the force tension of rope two to going directly horizontal of that 25 kilogram mass. And my next force that I'm gonna draw out here is from rope one. So that's gonna be at an angle here in that direction. And we're gonna call that force tension of one rope one. So same reason I said force tension two here, I'm gonna say force tension one in the other rope because that's the first rope. I'm not just gonna write force tension because I have to be able to differentiate between the two ropes somehow, rope one and rope two. Now the next thing you always, always do uh, is split your force tension one into the separate vector components. So you can never solve these questions by uh, doing different angles like that. You always have to split them up into their separate vector x and y components. So that's my vertical component, which is going to be force tension from one in the y, we'll call it. And we have our horizontal component, which is force tension from one in the x. And we also know that our angle between there and there is going to be 55 degrees. Okay, so now I've set up my, my free body diagram here, and that's a right angle in there. And so once I've set up my free body diagram, that's the very first step that you always do. Okay, so very first step in any force question is draw your free body diagram. If you don't have your free body diagram set up correctly, it's very, very difficult to do these questions. Okay, so free body diagram, labeling all your forces acting on the box. Okay, so this is the force gravity going down, force tension, horizontal, and this force, you have to split up into the X and Y vector components. Okay, always, always do that. Now the second thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna do it down here, try to conserve space. This is what you always do whenever you're drawing or whenever you're trying to solve dynamics questions and forces questions. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use Newton's first law. And so we need to use uh, basically Newton's first and second law here, so Newton's first and second law to write net force equations. Okay, and we know Newton's first law. If you know Newton's first law, you should be able to do this. And Newton's first law says an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted upon. So basically, if an object's stationary, and that means the net force acting on it is zero. So if I look at my box here, I know that if it's stationary, my force gravity going down has to be equal to the force tension in the Y going up because those are the only two forces acting in the Y and this box isn't going anywhere. So those forces must total zero. There must be no force acting on it. And then I know in the X direction, my force tension here, force tension two has to be the same as my force tension one in the X. So I know a lot about this question before I even begin. So we always wanna use Newton's first law to set up a nice force net equation, maybe one or two force net equations. So let's 
come up with one here. So let's say my force net, and let's do the y direction first, because remember we always have to split our x and y. We can't do x and y at the same time. So my force net acting in my y is gonna be equal to my force of gravity, and I'm gonna do subtract my force tension one in the y. And I'm gonna do subtract because they're going in opposite directions. Now, if you wanted, you could write that as a positive and then make this negative, depending on what you wanna use for your sign convention. But I like doing it this way, where we have force gravity being you know, positive and then the other direction being negative. As long as our opposite signs, we're okay. Okay, well, I know my net force in the y. Well, the net force has to be zero. All right, so my net force is zero, and we knew that because of Newton's first law telling us that basically an object that's stationary isn't gonna go anywhere because the net force acting on it is zero. Okay, so the net force in the y has to be zero. So we put a zero in for net force in the y. We know what that variable is equal to. Is equal to force gravity minus the force tension one in the y. Now I can rearrange this equation and I can add force tension one in the y to both sides and I'm gonna get force tension one in the y, let me scroll down a little bit here, is equal to the force of gravity. Okay, now we're getting somewhere, now we're getting somewhere. Well, we know another uh, formula, and we know that the force of gravity, because of Newton's second law, is the mass times gravity. So I'm just gonna write out an equation here on the side that we are gonna use, and I'll just write it in a different color so we know it's separate. We know that force gravity is equal to mass times gravity. And so we can make that substitution and we can say force tension one in the y is equal to, now I make that substitution and we're gonna get mass times gravity. Because I made that substitution in for mass and gravity equaling force gravity. And so now I know enough information because I know the mass of this block. If I scroll up, I know the mass is 25 kilograms, okay? And so the mass is 25 kilograms, so I'm gonna go force tension one in the y is equal to 25 kilograms multiplied by 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, and I'm, I'm saying that's positive because I chose force gravity to be positive in this question, but there's lots of ways to do it with different sign conventions. This is my preferred method. So force tension one in the y is going to equal, so you type that into your calculator, and you get 245.25 newtons, okay? So that's our force tension in the Y, so let's keep that in mind. That force there is the one that's acting up on our box up here, okay? So 245.25 newtons. Okay, now I'm gonna use something else. Well, I know that this angle in here is 55 degrees. So I know trigonometry, I know Sokotoa, and I know how to solve right angle triangles if I know one of the sides. Okay, so let me redraw the triangle just to make it very clear what we have now. Okay, so we have this, which is force tension two, or sorry, force tension one in the X, and we have the force going up, which we just found was 245.25 newtons. So 245, 0.25 newtons. And that's a triangle there, and this angle in here is 55 degrees. So now I know I can solve each of those sides if I'd like, because I know that this is 55 and I know that this is 245, and this is force tension. So I have enough information to find force tension now. And that's kind of what I was going for in this question. So let's do that. So we know that the opposite of the 55, the opposite is the one located on the opposite side of a right angle triangle is 245, and we know our hypotenuse, which is the one that's opposite of the right angle, is force tension. So I'm gonna choose my sine ratio to do this. So I'm gonna say that sine of 55 degrees is equal to the opposite, which is 245.25, divided by the hypotenuse, which is force tension. I rearrange that equation, multiplying both sides by force tension, and those cancel out, and then I divide by sine 55, 
And so I end up with force tension is equal to, and you just have to type this in your calculator, so I'm going to go ahead and type that in, 245.25 divided by 5 sine. And you get force tension is 299.4 newtons. So that's my force tension. So now I know what this force is. Okay, Now I can do the same thing to figure out my force tension in the x. Okay, so let's do that. But instead of using sine to figure that out, we could now use either cosine or tangent. All right, so I'm gonna use tangent. So I'm gonna say, with that triangle there, so tan of 55 again. Remember Sokotoa, so tan is opposite. So the opposite is 245.25 newtons divided by the adjacent, which is force tension one in the x. Okay, and I rearrange, I get force tension one in the x is equal to 245.25 newtons divided by tan of 55. And so I get force tension one in the x is equal to 171.55 newtons. Okay, so there's one of my Answers, okay, so now I got force tension one in the X is 171.55. I know force tension in the Y now is 245.25. And I know my force tension, the hypotenuse is 299. And that's force tension uh, one. Okay. And so I've almost figured out this question. So I've gotten the force tension in the A and one in the X, force tension one in the Y, and force tension. So now I need to get the force tension two, which is this one here. And so we go back to Newton's first law, and we know now, well, force net in the y was force gravity minus force tension, one in the y. However, what's the force net in the x? Let's look at our free body diagram. So force tension net in the x will be equal to the force tension two minus the force tension one in the x. So see that this one's acting in the horizontal to the right, and then we have our other force here acting in the in the left. So these have to be equal and opposite forces in order for this mass to be stationary. That's what Newton's law says. So we know that force net in the x has to be zero. And so because the object's not moving, Newton's first law says that Basically, no forces can be acting on that object, or there should be no net force acting on that object. Okay, so I basically just look at this and I can rearrange it. So I get force tension one in the X is equal to force tension two. Okay, hmm. I've already got force tension one in the X is 171.55. So 171.55 Newtons equals force tension two. And there we have it. So. This question asks us to get the force of tension in both ropes. So rope two was force tension two, which is 171.55, and the other one is force tension one, which is on rope one there, which we found was 299.4 newtons. Now, to give your final answer, you should probably write it as 3.0 times 10 to the power of two newtons, just to have proper significant digits. And then here, you're probably gonna write, write that one as 1.7 times 10 to the power of 2 newtons equals force tension 2. And that is the final answer.